Bill Picaro and Nick Allen. Uh, and we will start by uh, number two, comments, suggestions, petitions by residents in attendance regarding items not on the agenda. Anyone? Moving right along, we'll go to the third agenda item and the fire department report. Chief Pelna? Good evening, Steve Pelna, fire chief. Uh, first uh, note is uh, we lost one of our past chiefs, uh, Ray Street. He was the fire chief from 1964 to 1967. He was our oldest living past chief at the time, um, 86 years old. So we mourn his passing um, and we uh, celebrated his life this, uh, this past weekend. Um, as far as our, uh, our monthly totals, uh, police up, we're close, but um, uh, 118 calls for the, uh, for the month. Uh, we're starting to see a decrease in activity in the uh, southeast end of town with college being out. Um, one, uh, one incident of note in the borough uh, was one of the trash receptacles. Um, they're very costly, as we all know, the ones with the solar panels on it. Um, so uh, a nice firm reminder to all of our residents and uh, visitors um, not to put anything that's hot in those, uh, in those receptacles or ignition sources. Um, because unfortunately it was a very substantial uh, amount uh, for, those, uh, for those receptacles. Um, our numbers, our loss, uh, property loss numbers were um, a little over 101,000 for the month. Um, and none of those were really building related, a lot of cars and um, trucks, that sort of thing. And, and like I said, the trash receptacle at over, I think it was 10 grand off the top of my head. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm way off then. All right, so um, either way, uh, pretty substantial for a, for, yeah, it's an expensive trash can. Any questions? Was that the fire? Was it on North Church Street? Uh, yeah, so 109. Um, we, had a, we had a fire there approximately about a year ago, same, same place. Um, when we arrived on location, we had uh, we had smoke um, pushing out the the eaves of both 107 and 109. Um, so we uh, we brought in what we call our working fire dispatch. So we brought in assist companies as well because we didn't know the the extent of it. Um, but um, we believe there was some kind of um, I'll leave it undetermined right now. But it started on the outside of the building and uh, burn up through the through the the facade. Um, into the interior of the building, so. Okay, thank you. I don't have any questions, Ms. Maccaro. Okay. All right, great. Okay. All right, thank you. thank you, Chief. Up next, we have the police department. Chief Moorhead. Good evening, everyone. Chief Moorhead, Chief of Police. For the month of May, Police Department responded to 3,026 calls for service, of which 2,268 of those were in the borough. Uh, crime statistics for the month were marginal uh, compared to years past. If Jeff, you could scroll down to part one crime. Next one would be great. There we go. Um, you can see that we had uh, over double uh, reported assaults in 2021 compared to this year, but then you can see theft this, this year is, is up from last year. So nothing remarkable that occurred to cause those numbers. Um, along with theft right now, if you scroll down to the next one, um, we're also seeing a rise in, in fraudulent, uh, fraudulent uh, and uh, forgery type behavior. So all kinds of theft right now is on the rise. So I caution everybody, be, be very careful what you answer and how you answer it. We're seeing, seeing our officers are getting a lot of calls for those types of service. So please be careful with that. Other than that, everything else was a pretty normal month. I'd like to mention just a couple brief things. Uh, last week, our officers uh, located a car in the borough. Uh, the gentleman inside had uh, just killed two women in South Coatesville, Valley Township specifically, if you saw that one in the news. Um, our officers were uh, extremely professional. Uh, a gentleman was also carjacked and uh, had jumped out of the car, 
out in East Bradford Township, which is how the phone call initiated to our officers starting to look for this vehicle. Um, a lengthy pursuit ensued. Nobody was hurt. This gentleman exited the car and held a gun to his head for over a half hour's time. Um, our officers did an outstanding job negotiating, defusing this situation, uh, got, the, got the gentleman's mother on the phone, and uh, they were able to defuse it, and he surrendered peacefully. So good ending. Um, you'll be hearing more about that later on. Uh, we're in the middle of, a, of an awards uh, committee for that one now. The officers all involved did an outstanding job. So I just thought it's worth mentioning that that occurred less than a week ago. Uh, additionally to that, we're losing uh, an extremely valuable member of our police department. On uh, effective uh, July 6th, Sergeant Ryan Collins, who leads our detective division, is retiring after 28 and a half years. Uh, the police department would like to wish him well. Uh, his loss is going to be felt for a long time. Um, I know that because I trained Ryan 20, <laughs> 28 and a half years ago, and he's, he's been an outstanding officer. Uh, full of selfless service and uh, has done it very well for the borough and, and the residents should, should wish him well. And do you have any questions for me? So with um, the retirement of, as you said, Colin? Yes. Ryan Colin. Yeah. How many does, officers does that leave us with currently? Well, effectively, that that's going to put us down four officers with an so additional. 40? with an additional officer out long-term disability that uh, we don't anticipate his return. So we're feeling the pinch of five, but we're, we're effectively down four officers at the moment. Okay. okay. Anything you want to share about the application process and how that has gone? Yeah. So uh, the, uh, the written and physical agility test was given on May 21st and um, we had, uh, I believe, 41 candidates that passed the written and physical agility. Oral boards are being held next week on Wednesday and Thursday, where we're taking the top 24, and they will go through their oral panel interview, receive a score for that, and that'll be that'll be put in and then and then factored in, and then we'll move on from there. Thank you, Chief. Ms. Vaccaro? Mr. Allen? Okay. Thanks. If I could just mention one other thing, um, we're all keenly aware of what, what occurred last week or two weeks ago down in Texas in Uvalde. Um, we obviously know what happened in Buffalo a short time before that. I just want you to know that members of the police department here um, are have all received training in active attack response. Um, we take it very seriously in this county. There was actually a work group that was put together back in 2014. A series of officers received special training and then brought that training to the 800 officers in Chester County so that we were all operating under one mindset, one style of training. And that tr that style of training is single officer response. Uh, our officers are trained to go in by themselves and stop killing. So I just wanted you uh, to be aware that our officers are trained. Uh, we do talk about these topics, train in these topics frequently, and just wanted to make sure you're up to speed on that. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate yeah. that. Yep. All good. Yeah. Okay, EMS. Good evening, Chaz Bergen, EMS Chief from Good Fellowship. Do you have that report? I can talk through it. Uh, 585 total calls in the month of May, 179 of which were in Westchester Borough. A relatively busy month. We're still seeing above normal call volume, uh, which is unfortunately contributing to the hospital wait times and the hospital volumes as well. So uh, today we had the ambulance wait at a hospital for almost two hours. So we're still seeing that, unfortunately. Um, that, that's still continuing. But I will say the hospital is doing the best they can to manage the patients and keep them moving as fast as possible. But uh, it's still a challenge. Um, the announcement this week from Tower Health that they are pulling some of their EMS units in Western Chester County, uh, that is of concern to us. Uh, you know, we have an on City in West Bradford. Uh, we suspect that will get pulled west more often, uh, probably covering Downingtown, why Downingtown's in Coatesville City and Parksburg. So uh, we're working with a lot of the other EMS agencies in the west to try to work through that and come up with a plan to make sure that area is adequately covered, but also doesn't pull resources from Westchester, the main line, Euclid, 
stuff like that. Uh, the only thing I had is our success and stability meeting is the next two Thursdays, which I know several of you are attending. Um, we're just going to kind of give an overview of EMS as a whole and really where good fellowship is inside of that. So any questions for me at all? That was my question. So, no, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Um, there's the report. Nothing else really, um, notable on that other than just higher than usual call volume. So, okay. Ms. Vaccaro, anything. Mr. Allen. Okay. Thank you. Chief. Yep. And on to action items. Uh, first 1 is the promotional exams for the rank of sergeant chief Moorhead. <clears throat> yes, James Moorhead, uh, with the departure of sergeant Collins, uh, that's going to create a vacancy. Uh, a couple months ago, you'll remember public safety committee approved to begin the promotional process for corporal. The vacancy of uh, Christopher Craig I'm now going to be seeking approval to move forward with the promotional process to replace uh, Sergeant Collins. His official last date of employment is July 6th. Posting the civil service posting for that position will not go up until July 7th. So July 7th, I'd like uh, your approval to put up the posting for the promotional position of Sergeant and that'll begin the, the testing uh, process for that position. I don't have any questions. Just to, for clarification's sake, the language of the motion that council should uh, look be looking at is to uh, request that the Civil Service Commission prepare a list of eligible candidates for promotion in the position of sergeant. Um, just to get the details right. Mr. Metric, will that be like part of the uh, uh, voting session next week? So we'll put Correct. that. Correct. It has to be passed by an action of council, yep. Mm -hmm. And the wording will be on, on that? Yes. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Chief? That's it, thank All you. All right, thank you. The next item is a special, special event application for Westchester Children's Business Fair on July 23rd. Keith Kurowski, Director of Parks and Recreation. Uh, unfortunately, John and Tori McDonald cannot be here. Tori's the mom, she's sick. John, the dad, needs to take care of the kids. Uh, so I'll speak on their behalf. Uh, this is a new event taking place in a borough facility, so it has to be approved by the Public Safety Committee. Uh, it is going to be a small event at Marshall Square Park. It's a children's business fair. Uh, setup is, starts at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, should be over around 10, with the actual business fair. Little guys, little girls and guys, uh, kind of promoting what they want to become or things they've already created. Uh, mainly center around the gazebo, a handful of little children's booths, if you will, uh, similar to the larger events you see here in town. I've already uh, spoken with the, um, the police, Sergeant Gorman, and uh, they've given their uh, conditional approval, and we're just looking for the same from you guys. Okay, I, don't, I don't have any questions. Cool. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any other business for public safety tonight? All right, seeing none. Um, oh, we have to approve the May 22 business public safety quality of life me meeting minutes. Any questions on that? All right, thank you. Seeing nothing else, the meeting is adjourned at 6 45, 545.